Hey, this is Sant bringing you a Unreal Engine tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a timeline based moving platform. So if I quickly hit play, you can see a platform moving up. If we follow it for a couple of seconds, you'll see it eventually come back down again. And what's happening is we're using a timeline in blueprints to drive the logic for this. So without further ado, we'll go into it now. So the first thing we need to do is create an actor. To do so that, go inside a content drawer if you've got a folder, right click in the content drawer in one of the spaces here, and then choose a blueprint class, and then pick actor. What I'm going to do for mine is I'm going to call mine BP underscore moving platform version two. Now, if you followed the previous tutorial, I the, the version one was the one that used the interp2 movement component, but this one we're using a timeline. So give that a name, double left click to enter it. Once it's there, you can dock it in the viewport, but then it'll be an empty actor with a default scene route and nothing else in it. Next thing we need to do is we need to add a static mesh to give it a visual representation. So static mesh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the chamfer cube again, and I'm going to pretty much do what I did last time, scale it on the X and Y axis to two, and then I'm going to put 0.1 on the Z axis here. Once that's done, hit compile. And then what we're going to do next is I'll take us into the event graph. Now that we've um, we're in the event graph, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the event begin play nodes, but I don't want these two nodes, event tick or actor being in overlap. They're not needed. So I'm just going to delete those. So using the timeline version means that we need to record the actor's location at the start. That way it has an origin point and it knows where the platform is moving from. So to do that, we're going to store that as a variable. Right click in the graph, choose get actor location. If you go to the return value pin, right click, promote to variable. And what we want to do is we want to grab this set to location and we want to store it into this vector variable we've just created. And we're going to call this vector variable start location. Next, what we want to do is we want to create two events. In this case, I'm going to use two custom events. To do this, right click in the graph, choose add custom events. And this one I want to call move platform to end location. Right click again, type in custom, add custom events. And then the next one is going to be move platform to start location. These will make sense as we go along the tutorial, but for now we'll just keep them as they are. Next thing we need to do is we need to create a timeline and this is going to be the, the main driver of moving the platform. Right click in the graph, search for a timeline, add to timeline, hit enter, we'll just call it timeline. And what we'll do is to, in order to add some logic to this, we're going to double left click onto it and it's going to take us into the, into the timeline itself. So there's a few buttons here that control basically the frame rate, if it loops, um, if it's replicated, time dilation, even what tick group it operates on. But for now, I want to add a vector track. To do this, click on the track button, add vector track. And while we're here, uh, just call it new track zero. Oh, I can't. Okay, I'll just call it new track one. I'm going to change the length to be 10 seconds. And what I need to do is I need to basically add something to the Z axis. Um, I want the platform to move up and down. If you choose another axis, that's fine. Just make sure that you lock the other curves in order to get it to move the direction you want. So in this case, I'm going to lock it on the X and the Y. And that will just leave me with the Z curve. So now that I've done that, I'm going to click on the line and hold. I'm going to hold shift left mouse button. And I'm going to do it again and create another point somewhere over here. 
Select the first point, and I'm going to make the time 0 seconds and the value of 0. Select the second value, choose a value of 10, Oops. and I'm going to move that 1,000 units. Now at first you won't see the line, you'll see it sort of, if you look very closely going up here. In order to make this make appear, click zoom to fit horizontal, and then zoom to fit vertical. And as you can see, you now have a, a line based up here is going from 0 up to 10 seconds and the value 1000. Hit compile, and that's basically our timeline ready to go. If you look at the timeline, you'll now see our vector track appear as underneath direction. So, next thing we need to do, play from start, plug, move platform end, uh, end location into this uh, node. What I want to do is, I want to get the this value and add it to our start location. So, if you hold control, you can drag that in as, as a getter. Press plus, and you want an add operator. And then plug your new track into there, and then set actor location. Drag update into this, and that's pretty much the logic ready to go. However, the two events move back and forth, and we don't have any system detecting that. In its current state in the timeline, it'll just go from zero, move a thousand distance over 10 seconds. So how do we know when to reverse this? Well, the timeline can do that for us. So if we drag off direction here, and then look for a switch on timeline direction, we can actually get something that can determine whether to move backwards and forwards. So we have a two events here. If we're going forwards and we've finished, we want to move platform to start location to go backwards. However, if we're going backwards from 1000 to zero, we want to move the platform to the end position. Plug in move platform to start location and that will reverse it from the end. So quick explanation, when it starts, It'll play from start. Once it finishes, it'll notice that it's gone forward and it'll say, well, okay, then I've moved forward. I've reached the end. Now I need to move back to the start location. The timeline will fire, reverse it to the end. The timeline will be set to moving backwards. And then once it reaches, once it reaches the end and finishes, it says, well, I was moving backward. Now I need to move forwards again or move it back to the end location. So it'll make sense um, as you experiment. One last thing. We need another event here to be called to make this start. And this is going to be move platform to end location. Hit compile. Hit save if you have to. And then what I need to do is I just need to drag this into the map. So I'm going to put it around here so that we can see it. Um, we see it when we start. So let's give that a test run, see what happens. So, as you can see, platform is moving up. It should move 1,000 units. So, after 10 seconds has passed, it will reach the top and it will come back down again. Give it another few seconds. And yeah. So, pretty much the, the platform is moving in a loop and it's all being driven by the, the time timeline logic here. And. If I wanted to add any other changes to this, you could go in the timeline, and if you wanted to have a bit of ease in, ease out, you can select the two nodes by control selecting, right click, going to auto, and what you'll see is, you'll see the timeline, you'll see ease in and get faster as it reaches the top. You'll see it slow in gradually, and then back on the way out, it gets faster.